Maybe you do it, did what I did and accidentally goofed up your wiring for your ceiling fan light. Or maybe you are just interested in a story of how to fix something when you don't know how to fix it. In any case, this was my big mistake for the week and I'm going to show you how to wire up the remote controls to a ceiling fan when you have a four-way switch, which is three switches in three different locations, which are also hooked up to the fourth item, which is the light source. So the problem was originally that I had this bad switch and the switch I had was one of these. And anytime I would press the turn on light button, the light wouldn't turn on. And it wouldn't turn on, it wouldn't turn on. So I decided to open it up when we were doing some remodeling and try to um, fix the wiring. And it all, always bothered me a bit that the wiring wasn't quite right. And there's three switches. There's one at the top of the stair, one at the landing, and one at the bottom of the stair. And as uh, it happens with probably many people who try to do wiring in their house, it didn't work. And I ended up not only burning out the one at the bottom of the stairs, but also the one at the landing, and then this one at the top of the stairs. So none of the switches worked. And eventually, through trial and error, I ended up having just a mass of wires coming out of each and every outlet. So let's take a look and see what we've got now. So here's the switch where I started having the problem. This was the switch that was in there, and it was controlling the light and the fan speed on the ceiling fan. Originally, this had been wired just as a, for a chandelier. It just had toggle switches here at the landing and downstairs. This is at the top of the stairs. And somehow, somebody managed to wire these in correctly. It was all working just fine. Um, these switches, they will turn off the light if you switch them over. And the reason for that is kind of interesting. These are actually just um, radio transmitters. And so power comes in through one of the leads and it comes out the other lead. I mean, it's alternating current, but you think of it that way. And so the black leads have the power running through them. And then there's a ground and the ground goes up the copper. Well, this box was the most confusing one because it has so many wires. And if you look, there are, let's see, one, two, three blacks, three whites and three coppers. There, there's a black, a white, and a copper going up. There's a black, a white, copper going down. And then there's another black, white, copper going down on this side. So um, through uh, experimentation, I eventually figured out that one of these wires was the live wire. And it, when you are doing, um, trying to figure stuff out at home, I would suggest that you get some of this colored tape and that way you can label stuff. And so I immediately labeled this as my red wire. And after some trial and error, um, remember none of these wires were attached to each other, I decided that, okay, um, if I attach this red wire, which was coming from the bottom to this, red, this black wire that was going up, and then I attached a couple of the white wires, the same two white wires coming out of the same, then I could get the light to turn on. Well, that was good. But I still couldn't figure out how to um, get the other switches to work. I could wire one of these remotes in between the white and the black. Um, actually, not between the white and the black, but like taking off one of these and putting the, the switch right on the line in between. And I'll grab one of these burnt out ones to kind of show you the idea. So you just kind of wire it in between here and it worked. But how to get the other two to work? So um, I called an electrician. The electrician looked at it. He couldn't figure it out. Uh, my family members couldn't figure it out. I called a friend over. He couldn't figure it out. But what he did bring was a multimeter. And on the multimeter, he switched the multimeter to ohms. And then he um, proceeded to take a black and a white that were coming up in the same line, twist them together, and then we tried to see um, by testing the two wires whether or not the ohm meter would move up or not. And the ohm meter did move up, 
when we did the wires just right. But even when we kept working on that, we couldn't quite figure it out until this morning. And here's finally what I managed to do. You'll notice that I have a couple wires that have green on them. Well, I determined that these two wires go straight down to the bottom switch. And then in that switch, there's two more wires and they go up to the middle switch. And I labeled those with yellow. And then in the middle switch, there's two additional wires, one which is hot, and those aren't supposed to attach to anything. So that was confusing. <clears throat> so here, here's how it's wired up. The power is coming up. You can imagine this is the hot line, the red line. Then it goes up to the ceiling fan. It comes down this white line. It goes into the black a line that goes into the switch. It goes across the switch or the remote control. And it comes to the green line, the green black line. So let's go downstairs and see where it goes from there. So here we are downstairs. The green black line is coming in and then that's attached to one of the leads on the remote control. The power comes out, you could say. It's alternating current, so I don't know if you'd actually say that. And then instead of sending it back up the white green to the top box, we send it to the landing through the yellow and I send it through the yellow white. I don't remember exactly why, but that's the wire it's going through. So let's go up to the landing and see where it's at now. So here we are at the landing and it was the white yellow that the electricity is coming up on. Connect that to one of the leads for the switch and then the other black line goes back to the yellow but to the black yellow which goes back to the bottom of the stairs. So let's go back down there again. Here we are back at the bottom of the stairs. It was the black yellow which was coming down the stairs so that's this one right here and to get it to the top of the stair we ran it up the white green. So now let's go back to the top of the stair and see what happened there. So the white green comes up right here and then the power goes down the white lead which is paired with the um, the um, live wire right here, the red, black. So I could have labeled this with a little red piece of tape. But basically, so we have the four way, the power goes up to the light, it comes down to the first switch, it goes down to the second switch, it goes over to the third switch, and then it comes back down to the bottom box, back to this box, and then back down the wall. So it took a few steps. Now, if you were installing this sort of remote, um, I was able to buy the replacement remotes on eBay, not eBay, on Amazon, and the replacement remote looks pretty much identical to the original, except the original said Emerson, and it started to discolor the plastic, um, but it had exactly the same buttons. On the side here, in order to make the remote work properly, you have to make the switches match. So this one has just the first one in the up position and the other three in the down position. When you get these, they'll all start in the up position. So you just use like uh, a screwdriver and you can use the screwdriver just to push them up or down. Notice also on these that it requires or asks you to wire the middle wire, the green wire to your ground. And so in all three boxes, um, the copper ground is wired in as well. So another thing about these, if you're going to put these in your house, is you have to make sure that the, the current is, uh, has a circuit all the way through all the sources. Remember, when you turn the light off and you turn the fan off, you're actually turning off the power um, up yonder, although it must still be going through because you still can turn the light on, so there still must be um, power available in the switches. I'm going to turn the fan on high. You can hear it a little bit, then medium. But if you turn these any of these switches off, then the circuit is not complete. 
none of the remotes will work, including if you have a handheld remote, which I happened to get because I was already buying these for $30 each. I got one of the handheld remotes for $20, and I suppose maybe we could buy more of those. So that was my big mistake for the week. It cost at least $100, and it cost a lot of time and an electrician coming out and saying that he couldn't fix it. And all I really needed to do is to go onto YouTube and search how to fix one of those switches because you actually can open up the switch where the green button is. You can clean behind the green button with some pencil and then it works again. And if I had known that, I could have saved a lot of time and energy. Um, but for you, Perhaps the usefulness of this video is knowing that if you do have a four-way switch, a four-way system where you have a light and three switches, you can wire in those little remotes. And what's helpful is number one, which I should have done, is to take a picture of each box. As soon as you open the box and you have the wiring out, take a picture. Maybe take two or three pictures. The electrician, when he came here, even asked to see the pictures. So take a picture in the box. Um, number two, with those little remotes, don't try to complete the circuit through the remote without having something on the line like, like the light bulb to provide resistance because that's too much current and you'll burn out the remotes, which is what I ended up doing with three of them. Number two, find or get yourself a multimeter. I actually had one of these in a uh, hidden away downstairs somewhere, but when my buddy brought his over, I was like, oh, that probably would have been really helpful. And the whole idea on these is when you set them to um, ohm, well, when you touch the two leads together, as long as the battery on the inside is working, it's gonna go up a little bit, okay? So as long as you make um, most of a loop, so if you connect the black and the white at the top and then the black and the white are open on the bottom, you can touch the two wires to there and see that it completes the circuit. And so I was able to figure out that there's the one wire going up and down and there's the other wire going this way from the landing to the downstairs. And that was how I figured out, well, that if we run the electricity in this direction and then back, that it's gonna work. So get yourself one of these and then label the wires. So I had this tape already, but I believe I got this also on the internet, Amazon or somewhere, and label the wires so that you know what's going where. Probably be, would be helpful to have a diagram. But number one, take pictures when you open boxes. Number two, get yourself a multimeter so you can make sure where the wires are going. And number three, get yourself some tape and hopefully the next big mistake you make won't be the next, this big mistake that I made. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, like, and comment below.